Hi, my name is Mindy, and this is a walkthrough of my Project Zero for CS50, uh, the web course in JavaScript and Python. This is the home page of the project. It's a brief site about artificial intelligence, and I used Bootstrap, so I've got columns. Uh, I've got four pages. There they are. Uh, I used the Bootstrap navbar component. And I also used the sticky footer, which you can see how it works on the home page here, if I can grab the corner. Um, so it stays at the bottom, even if the content vertically does not fill the page. But when you've got a longer page, it doesn't stay over top fixed. It's at the bottom, this footer. Uh, so that was a component. And then also the nav bar is a component. And if you know how the bootstrap nav bar works, um, if I open my developer tools, get a little phone size here. So you get this hamburger menu when uh, the page is too small for the regular menu. And um, let's see if we turn that off. So when it's wide enough, you get the navigation at the top. And when it's narrow, uh, the little hamburger pops up and you'll navigate that way. Um, so you can already see that thanks to Bootstrap, um, the site is pretty responsive. The design will uh, adapt to whatever screen size we've got thanks to Bootstrap styles. Um, the table in particular, the table is on the algorithms page and uh, I use bootstrap styles throughout for this table. So here's the bootstrap uh, table styles. You just like put on their styles, their classes, and uh, I use their colors and their column span styles. So it's just a normal HTML table and to style some of the text differently, I put in one of my own CSS classes. And the neat thing about it is that when it gets too small like this, um, you can still scroll back and forth, even on a phone. Like you can swipe over and it doesn't shrink the table too much. So that's a bootstrap thing. So at the top of the table, when it's wide enough to show the full table, you don't see anything right above it. But when it gets smaller, um, this shows up. And so that's one of my media queries. And then uh, my other media query was for the machine learning page. I've got this big illustration at the top, which is actually 750 pixels high, I think it is in real life, um, but it's responsive thanks to Bootstrap. And what I did, if you look at this little red gear toward the bottom, I made it get, see the red gear get cut off? I made the, uh, the image container, which is a div, get more shallow when the page is wide. This is the one that handles what I just showed. And then this is the one that puts the little paragraph above the table on the algorithms page. Um, and while we're in here, I'll point out I've got one variable, a SAS variable, and I've got one, uh, the, what's it called? The indented, the embedded thing for SAS. So I've got um, my H and P embedded inside this. And that's the iris boxes are on the machine learning page. So these guys are also responsive. They will go down to two by two at a certain width, and then they'll go down to one. And I've got flex styles on them uh, as well uh, in Bootstrap so that uh, to handle the way the text goes. Expert systems, uh, also responsive. Three columns goes down to one. And uh, let's see. Yeah, nothing really special there. Columns, images, table, unordered list. Oh, the unordered list is right there on the expert systems page, uh, one full page. There's a page, um, this too, this will just go from three to one columns, right? So um, that's an illustration in the middle. This page also goes from three down to one. 
So uh, I used Bootstrap before, I really like it, and it was first time for me using uh, SAS, and so that was interesting to learn.